increase in heaven. If what the people see about you only make them think about you, it has failed. If all they see is that, ah, isn't that man a great man? And they never think about God. He doesn't draw their hearts away from you unto God. That's useless. But let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and not glorify you but glorify God the Father in heaven. Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. That's the challenge, and that is also the blessing that the Lord Himself has provided for every one of us. I come to point number two laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Matthew chapter 5 again. We come back to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 16, that's what we're studying today. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God your Father which is in heaven. He said, we should let our light shine, so that they will see something. What are they to see? Something tangible. Something visible. Something recognizable. Something observable. Something we can point to. Good words. That they may see your good words. Good words. We are saved to do good. In Ephesians chapter 2, the reason for our salvation is so that we may have good words. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of words, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. When you come into the hand of Christ, he recreates you. He remodels you, he reforms you, he refashions you, and then he releases you to go and do good. Christ never releases anybody to go and do evil. He releases you to go and do good. We are created by him, recreated, saved, and we are created unto good works. And then he tells us in that verse 10, which God has ordained before that we shall walk in them. In Second Timothy chapter three, good words. Second Timothy chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's talking about the whole Bible. Any part of the Bible that you study, it is given by inspiration of God. The Word of God, the totality of the Word, the completeness of the Word, from cover to cover, 
from the beginning to the very end, the commandments, the promises, the provisions, the warnings, the examples, the illustrations, the prophecies, everything in the Word of God. All Scripture, without subtracting anything, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable. Profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, profitable for correction. The Word of God is supposed to correct us. When we're going the way of the flesh, the Word of God is supposed to make us retrace our steps and come back to the way of the Spirit. The Word of God is for correction and for reproof. And then it says for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good words every time you hear the word of god is to increase good works in your life that the man of god and of course that the woman of god that the child of god that the believer in christ may be perfected thoroughly furnished thoroughly prepared Thoroughly trained unto good works. That's what the word of God is to do in our lives. And then we are told in Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two from verse nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. You will be for honor. You will not be for dishonor. Uh, you know what a shame when you know you have a child at home and then he goes to school and the people that see that child they say what kind of child is this what's the name of your father and then the child drops his head it's a disgrace to the family dishonor if you're a member of the church and you profess to be saved let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let's say you, you know, you find somebody and he's roaming about around GRA, Government Reserve Area. And then it's with a lady there, and they're doing some things that shouldn't, because there's no light there. The place is a little bit dark. And then a policeman is passing by, and then he sees them, what are you doing here? And then the man, you know, quickly, you know, readjusts himself, what's your name? And then he tells the name. You go to church? Yes. Which church? Don't mention our church. Don't mention our church if they catch you something like that. Just say, I go to one church in town. And then when he says, this is my church, then the policeman will look at him and say, aren't you a bad egg in that church? Dishonor. But you see, the Lord wants us to be unto honor. That's why it says in verse 21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, 
a meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. That's the reason we're sanctified for good works. That's the reason we come to a deeper relationship with the Lord for good works. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work to establish us. Which means it's not just that you accidentally did good work on one day, accidentally, just happened to be good. But no, continually, consistently, you are established in good works. And then it tells us in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, a pattern of good works, that other people can pattern their lives after you. And they can pattern everything they do after your lifestyle. Come back to Titus chapter 2 again. Titus chapter 2 verse 7. In all things, not in some things, all things. In all things, showing thyself a pattern. Uh, you know, believers love correction. There's some believers that hate correction. Believers love Rebuke, scriptural rebuke. Believers love orientation. We're going astray. We're not following a good pattern. And then the teaching of the Bible says, Hey, watch it. That's wrong. Then you say, I'm sorry. And then you go in the right direction as a believer. The unbeliever is the one that says, Oh, you say that's not a good pattern, I'll do it again. You say that's an evil work, I'll do it again. That's an unbeliever, whoever he is. In all things, showing thyself to be good, to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing of corruptness, gravity, sincerity. Verse, 4, verse 8. And it says, Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works not zealous of bad works not zealous of something that will destroy the doctrines of the bible we teach in the church but zealous of good works let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Titus chapter 3 verse 8. Titus chapter 3 verse 8. This is a faithful saying. And this says, I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good words. You see how many places you have in the New Testament 
careful to maintain good works when we're born again that's what we dedicate our lives to verse 14 let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they may not that they may be not unfruitful in first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 18 that they do good that they be rich in good words ready to distribute willing to communicate to be rich in good works to have good works plenty in our lives in first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 12 having your conversation honest among the gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. And then in Second Corinthians chapter nine, good works. Every time good works for a believer. That's the essence of being saved. That's the result of being saved. That's the joy of being saved. Once you are bad, for by grace now you are good. Once evil works issued out of you, but now you know Christ, good works are produced 